Okay, sorry about that. I really like that song. I kind of listening to it. All right, we're going to talk about composition of functions, which is actually another operation besides adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing functions. It's pretty much where you take a function of a function. And we have its own notation here. Composition of functions f and g, de donated as f circle g. Sometimes they say f composite g, but most of the times I've heard it's f circle g. It's to be defined by, it looks like fog, but it's um, f of g, f circle g, or f of g of x, where you're taking the, the function that's closest to the x, that's the inside function, and then you're taking the outer function of that. The domain of f circle g is the set of all real numbers such that x is in the domain of g, that's the, the inside function, and then whatever you get out of this, the y values that you get out of this have to be in the domain, have to be x values for the outside function, so the g of x has to be a domain of f. So this is a little more complicated, determining the domain, so we'll do that on a few examples, but we'll start off by just actually evaluating here. Let f of x equal x squared minus 3x and g of x equal x plus 4 find f of g of negative 4. Well, f of g of negative 4, first you find g of negative 4. So if you plug negative 4 in to g of x here, negative 4 plus 4, that's 0. So now you're finding f of 0, which would be 0 squared minus 3 times 0, or 0. So that works pretty straightforward. You find the inner function, and then you take the outer function of whatever you get here. Same kind of a problem here, only we switch the functions around, g of f of negative 5. So first I plug negative 5 into here. g of f of negative 5, f of negative 5 would be negative 5 squared, 25, minus 3 times negative 5, so that would be plus 15. 25 and 15 is 40. Just plugged it in here and did the arithmetic. Kind of did some of it in my head here. Now I'm going to find g of 40, so that would be 40 plus 4, or 44. This one is not written exactly like this, but it's the same notation. F circle G of 9 means F of G of 9. So first I find G of 9 by plugging 9 into the rule for G. So this is F of G of 9 is 13. And now I plug 13 into here. Be careful with your arithmetic. 13 squared, 169 minus 3 times 13 is minus 39. So 169 minus 39, 169 minus 39 would be what, 130. Okay, now those are particular values, negative 4, negative 5, and 9. Let's look at it more in, in terms of x, in terms of the rules. Given f of x is equal to 3x plus 4 and g of x is equal to 1 over x minus 1. Now notice here, the domain of f is all real numbers, but the domain of g are all real numbers except for 1. Write a rule for each function and then give the domain, write the domain in interval notation. So f circle g of x, which is f of g of x, is f of... 1 over x minus 1 here. Now I'm going to plug all of this in for x in the rule for f, my outer function. So this is 3 times 1 over x minus 1 plus 4. Or 3 over x minus 1 plus 4 over 1. I'm going to go ahead and get a common denominator, so I'd have to multiply top and bottom here by x minus 1. So that's going to give me 3 plus 4. 4x minus 4 on top all over x minus 1, and so that's going to be 4x minus 1 all over x minus 1. As you can see here, we would have to avoid, uh, if we have, for example, we have already thrown 1 out, we would want to make sure that whatever we have does not affect and, uh, and is part of the domain of f, whatever we plug in for x here for g of x, the y values have to be in the domain of f, well the domain of f is all real numbers, so our only restriction here is that x cannot equal 1. So the domain, I can write this down here, the domain of f circle g would be everything except for positive 1. All right, and that doesn't simplify any further. Now let's do it the other way around, g circle f of x, which would be g of f of x, which would be g of 3x plus 4. Now I'm going to plug 3x plus 4 in for x into the rule here for g. Now remember, I can't have anything that makes this guy equal, uh, 0 in the denominator because I'm going to get a rational expression here. So I have 1 all over 3x plus 4 minus 1. 
So that would be 1 over 3x plus 3. And as you can see here, I can't have negative 1. If I have negative 1 here, and plug negative 1 in, I'm going to make this expression equal to positive 1, and it's going to give me 0 in the denominator. So I can't have 1, and I can't have negative 1. So this is it simplified, but my domain of G circle F would be from negative infinity to negative 1, from negative 1 to 1, and from 1 to infinity. So like I said, it's a little bit more complicated. You have to kind of be on your toes a little bit more. But here's the expression, and then here's the domain. I have a couple more problems that are similar with a little bit more complicated functions. Uh, we're only going to do the uh, functions one way, the composition one way. And as you can see here, look at your two uh, expressions here. As you can see, I took the two functions, I composed them, uh, f circle g, g circle f. I got two very different looking functions. And so in general, uh, composition of functions is not commutative. But up here, we're going to do g circle f of x, given these two functions, f of x equals the square root of x minus 1, g of x equals 1 over x minus 3, and then we're going to find the domain. That'll be fun. All right, first things first, g circle f, which is g of f of x, is g of the square root of x minus 1, which would be, now I'm going to plug that into here, 1 over the square root of x minus 1 minus 3. Now, I don't think I'm going to rationalize the denominator quite yet because I'm going to try to figure out my domain here, but I could rationalize my denominator by multiplying by the conjugate of the denominator, and maybe I'll do that in a second here, but let's see if we can find the domain. Now, we can't have 3 uh, in for g, so we'd have to figure out when does this equal 3? Well, this is equal to 3 when I take the square root of 9, which means x is 10. 10 minus uh, 1 is 9, the square root of 9 is 3. So it looks like I cannot let f, uh, I can't let x be uh, 10, because as you can see, I'm going to get uh, 10 minus 1, which is the square root of 9, which is 3 minus 3, I get 0 in the denominator. So I'm going to uh, eliminate anything that makes, uh, uh, gives me a y value such that g of that y value gives me uh, 0 in the denominator. So I'm going to be throwing, um, a 10 out. Now, up here, f of x, remember f of x is the radical, so that means x minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0, x has to be greater than or equal to 1, but it can't be 10. So I'm going to have to throw 10 out and keep everything else here. Now, don't worry about the 3, because you can see here that if you plug 3 in, you're not going to get 0 in the denominator. So my domain here for g circle f is equal to everything greater than 1 except for 10, greater than or equal to 1 except for 10. So from 1, including 1, to 10, and then from 10 to infinity. A little more complicated. Now again, I could rationalize this denominator by multiplying top and bottom by the square root of x minus 1 plus 3. And if I do, I'm going to write this as the square root of x minus 1 plus 3. On the bottom, I'm going to get x minus 1 minus 9. That's going to be x minus 10. And you can see again why 10 is excluded just that much more clearly right here. Now let's try it the other way around here. Or let's try f circle g of x with two different functions. And they're both rational. Yikes. And I have to keep the check of the domain. Now I can't let uh, x be a negative 1 here. And I can't have 3 or negative 3 here. And I want f circle g of x. So that's f of g of x. So uh, for g of x, it's everything but 3 and negative 3. Okay, let me write that down so I don't forget. The domain of g is everything but negative 3 and 3. Keep track of that. And then let's see what restrictions we might have here. So uh, let's see, this would be f of g of x, which is 5 over x squared minus 9. Now I'm going to have to plug this in here and here, which is going to give me 5 over x squared minus 9 all over 5 over x squared minus 9 um, plus 1. 
Well, I would probably multiply top and bottom by x squared minus 9 to simplify this mess. And that would give me, let me bring it over here, uh, 5 on top and then 5 plus x squared minus 9, which would be 5 over x squared uh, minus 4. So I can see right away I can't get 2 or negative 2 out of this. So I'd have to avoid anything that would make this expression equal to 2 or negative 2. Hmm. So that's going to throw, I already have thrown it out negative 3 and 3, so I have to throw out negative 2 and 2 as well. The domain here for F circle G would be from negative infinity to negative 3, from negative 3 to negative 2, from negative 2 to positive 2, from 2 to 3, yikes, and from 3 to infinity. There's a bunch. Okay. Now, the last example, there's some composition involved, including an extended composition of three functions. But, oh, and my fault, I did not circle this in red. Let me grab my red pen. The reason I have this example here is it was on the uh, review. So it's a little bit of review from before at the first part of the lesson, and then a little bit here with composition. So f plus g of x would be f of x plus g of x which would be x squared plus 1 plus the square root of x minus 3, and that does not simplify. f minus h of x would be f of x minus h of x, which would be x squared plus 1 minus the quantity 2x minus 5. I have to be careful there because I'm subtracting two terms. x squared minus 2x looks like plus 6. Now here's a composition, f circle g of x, which we know now is f of g of x. It's not asking about the domain. This is f of g of x. g of x would be the square root of x minus 3. And then that gets plugged into here. Well, look, we're going to square it. So we have the square root of x minus 3 squared plus 1, which would be x minus 3 plus 1, or x minus 2. That one really simplified. Uh, g circle f of 3, so this would be g of f of 3. f of 3, let's come back to here, would be 3 squared plus 1 is 10. So this is g of 10. g of 10, this would be 10 minus 3, it would be a 7 there, that would be the square root of 7. Alright, and then this one, what the heck to do with this one? Well, we do the inner function, then we do the middle function, then we do the outer function. So this is f of h of g of 7. It's just an extension from what we were just doing. So g of 7, that would be the square root of 7 minus the square root of 4, which is 2. So this would be f of h of 2. h of 2. 2 times 2 is 4 minus 5 is negative 1, so this is f of negative 1. And f of negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 1 is still 2. Still using it after all these years. 1 plus 1 equaling 2 coming back to help us from all the way back to kindergarten. And we get an expression there of 2.